Hey, it's Monday night, and we're back here with VoiceOver Body Shop. And tonight our guest is Chris Edgerly, who apparently is many people. <laughs> he's uh, a busy guy. Yeah, he's a busy guy. He does a lot of things, uh, character voice work. Um, he does stuff on The Simpsons, and he's got his own uh, webcast. We're going to talk about all sorts of really cool stuff on various sections of the business mm -hmm. and talk a little bit about creating your own content, maybe. Very cool. Yes. And I heard something about you being at a podcast convention. Oh, yes. I was at a huge podcast convention, so, and I'll fill you in on what all that was about because yeah. it was actually rather exciting. Curious. So, yes. And we're going to talk a little bit about mic technique tonight. Very good. And if you have a question, throw it in the chat room, and Paul Stefano's there tonight, and he will get that to us. So, and it's my mom's birthday. Yay. yay. Happy birthday to you. The all right. family's all, here. All that on more and more on VoiceOver Body Shop coming right up. Two men, twin sons from different mothers, with a passion for voiceover recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together, in one place. George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no-holds-barred, myth-busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is. Together, to bring you all the latest technology, today's voiceover superstars, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products. Source Elements, remote connections made even easier. VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to be a successful voiceover artist. J. Michael Collins Demos, award-winning demo production. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voiceover website won't be a pain in the butt. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live from their super secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Not that it bears repeating, but I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Or VO BS. Well, All right. Hey, audience. Today. Yeah. You guys are well rehearsed. That's what Thank we like you to so see. much. Yes. That's because our audience are regular viewers, by not by choice, but by blood. Ah, yeah. <laughs> they, the, it's the, my family. The, the entire Whittem clan is here tonight. <laughs> Including my daughter. Yes. And I knew they were coming this time. Thank so. goodness. You had like a half an hour notice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's really fun to have them all here. They've been visiting all week. Um, they head back tomorrow, so this is... And it's, it's my mom's birthday, so we're having a little bit of fun tonight celebrating that. And right. we've had a great time. Went to Duke's down on the beach oh, yesterday. Oh, Duke's, yeah. And had a really fun meal. And then to keep the, ho the ho Hawaiian theme going. I was going to say, wait, isn't Duke's in Honolulu? Yeah, it's, like, it's the Duke's in name. You it know, was a long and, swim, I guess. Right. And then we, had a, we watched Moana projected in the yard on a <laughs> bed sheet last night. Very cool. Which was fun. That's outstanding. Well, <laughs> well, uh, happy birthday, and uh, thanks for joining us tonight. Our guest tonight is Chris Edgerly. Now, he's a noted guy. He does a lot of stuff. That's the fascinating thing about our business, is there's a lot of voices out there and people who do things that everybody watches, but they're like, they don't know who they are. Well, uh, here's your chance to meet somebody tonight who has some yep. really cool stuff going on in his career and some great advice and... So stay tuned for that. In Behind just a the scenes. Bit while. That's right. And uh, we got a few more things to talk about. We're going to talk about mic technique. And if you got a question, I can never say this enough. Put it in the chat room. And uh, Paul Stefano, who is running our chat room tonight, will throw that our way because we thrive on your home voiceover studio tech questions as well as questions for our guests. Yes, we do. So anyway, with that out of the way, it's now time for... Career. 
And here is the voiceover extra news for July 31st, 2018. Mouse editing. Now, does that mean like, you know, anyway. Here's an interesting idea for speeding up the voiceover editing process. Get your fingers chasing a gaming mouse. The idea is transfer the functions you do on a keyboard to a mouse with multiple keys. And if you're a gaming nerd, as VO Pro Neil K. Hess admits to be, this could be a simple deal. In a new article now at voiceoverextra.com, Neil explains that when he started in VO a number of years ago, he felt that editing was consuming too much of his time, taking him away from the mic. So Neil let his gaming mouse into the studio, and what resulted was a shaving of half the time he would otherwise be spending on editing. Here's what he does. Using Adobe Audition, excellent, as the recording editing software and a Logitech G602 gaming mouse, which has multiple keys that you can set to do a variety of functions. For instance, on the mouse, Neil's G7 key is used to record. His G8 key gets him to clean up and compression. The G9 is his key to cut, and so on. In the article, Neil explains how to customize the mouse and create your own settings. While Neil uses Adobe Audition, he believes you should be able to do this with almost any DAW and most gaming mice. You can get a good gaming mouse for less than 50 bucks, Neil adds, and which could quickly pay for itself in the amount of editing time this will save you. Even if you're not a gaming nerd, you might want to give this a try. This article and hundreds, hundreds more are on VoiceOver Extra, all sorts of voiceover topics, your daily resource for voiceover success. Now, that's something that a lot of people have... Everybody does it a little bit differently. I know. That's a very custom kind of thing to do. Yeah. You know, I, I use a Magic Mouse with Adobe Audition. You know, zoom, scroll, boom, boom, boom. It's all finger movements and stuff. Yeah, and gestures. I, right. And and I have maybe one or two keystrokes that I use for, you know, for, you know, for reducing the volume or doing those sorts of things. Maybe an M key for Mark. So, I mean, you, you work, you do what work, works for you. And, That's right. I mean, know, I'm a trackpad user. I hate so the I'm trackpad. using the trackpad here. I use this at home. I use it on my MacBook because guess what? If you have a MacBook, that's what's built into that's it. That's what you got. So you're kind of stuck with it. So I've kind of gotten used to using trackpad. The, the, the smart gaming mouse thing, it's just another way to go about using keyboard shortcuts. Right. So for him, I don't know. I'd be curious to know what his left hand's doing. When his right hand, Maybe we don't assuming, know. He's, assuming he is right-handed, if his right hand is on the mouse, I wonder what his left hand is doing. So if he's doing all those things with the right hand, the thing that seems difficult to me would be to, to remember what keys are programmed into right. the gaming mouse because you don't have enough keys to do every function. Right. So you have to, that would be tough to keep track. Again, it's very personal. There's it's, also the Shuttle Pro. Right. We've talked about the Shuttle Pro. Little thing you That's turning the wheel on yeah, that thing. Yeah, so that's sort of like a dedicated control surface for editors that give you a whole bunch of programmable keys and then a shuttle control for fast-forward rewind. Another take on the same idea. So if you, found your, if you find yourself constantly clicking your mouse, then going to a drop-down menu, clicking there, scrolling down to copy, then going to the next place where you need to paste, then going to the edit menu, clicking and clicking paste, it might be time to learn some keyboard shortcuts or some mouse shortcuts. Right. There really isn't a whole lot you should be doing, though. It's edit, know where the marks are, boom, 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 boom. And the thing is, if you know a lot of keyboard shortcuts from word processing, right? if you know Control-C or Command-C for copy, Control-C, Command-V on the Mac for paste, guess what? That works in your DAW. It, sure it works does. in pro, It works in, I don't know about Pro Tools, but it works in Twisted Wave, it works in... Sound Forager works in Audition. Yeah. So, uh, you know, learn your keyboard shortcuts, kids. Either the keyboard or the mouse. Whatever it is, learn some. Something that will speed you it up. It will speed you up. Okay. So, tech update this week. Mm -hmm. I get to do it this week. Yes, please. Thank you. Yes. I, I was in very steamy Philadelphia. I mean, it was 103 in my backyard here today. There was about 85 and about 95% humidity. Yeah. 
the heat index. It was like, you know, well, you know what Philadelphia is like being from the Philadelphia area. Sure you do. It's like walking into a hot sponge. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Feels like you're wearing a suit of concrete. Yeah. Concrete. Yeah. And there are a couple of interesting things, like waiting outside the Reading Terminal for a party and there's a cloudburst while we're all waiting to go oh, that's in. that's even more exciting. Oh, yeah. Apparently, it's been fun weather in You're Philadelphia. You're moist, but then it's dry afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's a win-win. Yes. Well, I don't know. anyway, well, I was at Podcast Movement, and which was a, uh, a convention of people who do podcasts. Now, if most of you are familiar with going to a voiceover convention, which are a lot of fun, like Fafcon or uh, 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 VO Atlanta or one of those where there might be 500 of our cohort cohorts there. Mm-hmm. There were 2,500 people at this conference. It was Woo. huge. And this is not a fan conference. No, this, this is, is a podcast. This is people conference. who are doing podcasts yeah, right. or want to do podcasts. Right. And so I was there doing some technical advising with people. We had five Hey, Aren't You Dan Leonard setting, or sightings. Hey! Which was kind of pretty cool. neat. It was. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's at the voiceover conventions, I know everybody. Right. This was Fresh Faces. Very cool. It was cool. like, hey, okay, it's great that you watch. Awesome. We're <laughs> but, on the radar. Yes. Uh, but from a technical perspective, while everybody's wanting to get to the tech stuff, there were a lot of manufacturers there. And uh, I'm doing reviews of of their products. And the interesting thing was, is they were all drooling because there are 2,500 podcasters to many of them, except for the people who are making software specific to podcasting. And some of it is okay. And some of it is, you know, kind of contrived. The people who know how to record have a better way of doing these things. Uh, But there were come Adobe was there. And Yellow Tech, and Sure, and uh, Neumann Sennheiser. Neumann, Se- of course, they were there. They were there. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and uh, any our, booth manufacturers? There was one. Our good friend Adil at uh, VocalBoothToGo.com. Uh, cool. Yeah, and he has something that he's working on. But it was interesting talking to the manufacturers because they were looking wide-eyed at all these people. They had no idea. Some of them had somewhat of an idea. Yeah that this market even existed. And it's so much bigger than voiceover, probably not as big as music, which, of course, all this stuff is designed for. Oh, another world, yeah. Yeah, uh, but here's, you know, here's another huge market that they're going after. One of the people who really was having a great time was our friend Roger Cloud, who makes the Cloud Lifter. Maybe you're familiar with that. He makes a really high-end ribbon mic, but yeah. then he makes this product that's a good accompaniment to a ribbon mic or a dynamic mic, mic. Right. that's very affordable. A lot of podcasters use dynamic mics. Right. They this use... thing boosts the output a lot, right. like 25 dB. Yeah. A real popular mic with podcasters is the SM7B, and some use an RE20, and Roger's like, it's the perfect thing. And we're like, you know, and I also have a, you know, a... One of his T-shirts. So, oh yeah. So I had to mention his name tonight. Um, He's so, a good guy. Oh right. Oh, he was great. He, I mean, he came and found me, which oh. was which was great. Yeah. And uh, but some other interesting manu- you know, you know, software people that have stuff that's just for podcasting. Uh, but the equipment's all the same. It's all the same stuff, except you know, they people tend to use uh, dynamic mics. Uh, for a closer radio type read. Right. Uh, they like that radio ish sound. I right. Guess. So that was one major takeaway from this. The other major takeaway for you voice actors out there, and 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 as somebody who listens to a lot of podcasts, and I and I know you do. I do. Uh, because you're in the car a lot. I'm stuck here in the studio thirty seven hours a day. And it's <laughs> like I don't get to listen to any of this stuff. Yeah. Um there's a crossover here and the crossover is that people who are voice actors they could learn a lot from podcasters and it's something that the podcasters don't even know they're doing and that is that podcasting is generally for the most part off script it's usually somewhat ad-libbed or somebody has a story they want to tell and they might be working off notes or they might be reading it but for the most part the podcasts that i've listened to it's like Hi, I'm so and so, and here's my story for this week. And they just start talking. And if you're able to relate a story, it's a it, it's a great delivery. Do minimal ums and uhs and right, you know, yeah. But it's it, but it's natural speech. Yeah, and it can have the ums and ahs and stuff yeah, like that. That's true. Uh, and uh, and and I think that voice actors could learn a lot from 
instead of being very formal in how they present things, to relax and just deliver it that way. And I met a lot of people, you know, who are excited about podcasting or have been podcasting. The other interesting thing is that I think, you know, you know, having some vision into the future, uh, I see great opportunity for voice actors with podcasting mm-hmm. because it's a total fork in the road from broadcasting. And meaning that some of the major networks, the major radio networks like Westwood One and several others are starting their own curated podcast networks, yeah. Yeah. which means advertising. Mm-hmm. And there were some major advertising executives there that are like, you know, we're going to have curated networks. You know, th- we know that there are, there are shows on World War II. There are shows on makeup. There are shows on making ice cream or food or something like that. There's a bunch of different varieties of, of shows. I mean, it's everything. I mean, yeah. but they can categorize them and they can bulk sell those advertisements to major advertisers, meaning that there's advertising dollars available to podcasts that are picked up on their networks. Right. Thing is, is everybody's got a podcast and it's the wild west. There's no rules. No, I know. It's not broadcast. It's not, not FCC regulated yet. Yet. Yeah. Um, well, we'll see. And you can do pretty much whatever you want, yeah. whatever format you want, no matter how long or short quality, anything you want live scripted, anything you want. It's just, yeah, it's a party. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so people, it's, you're taking everything you can, throwing it against the wall and see what sticks. Yeah. So try doing a podcast. Yeah. I mean, if you've got something, you're an enthusiast, something you're extremely knowledgeable about, something you can talk to off the, talk about off the cuff without a ton of scripting. Yeah. It's a good way to go. I do listen to podcasts that are clearly scripted and that's fine if they're very tightly produced, like very short. Right. I don't mind if they're scripted that way because it means you, you know, they've got, they've put a lot of thought into what they're wanting to get out there. And they're trying to hit a certain time frame. And that, that I don't mind. A short scripted podcast sometimes can be good. Right. Um, but generally, most of them are not so scripted. Right. Some of them are very highly produced. Right. Um, like the one, the other one that I do, uh, uh, the Pro Audio Suite, way not scripted. But very well produced. Like the right. production values are very high. A lot of editing happens after the show. Right. You know, what you hear on that show is not what goes out on the air, right? right? So, so many ways to go about it. Cool. Yeah. yeah. I got to listen to more of them. Was there any gear that really stood out? Was there one thing that just like, oh, oh, that's cool. I hadn't seen that thing before. Uh, there was a, a piece of software called Hindenburg. Oh, yeah. Which that's one of those things I've known about it, but it's never really like. That I found fascinating. It, it's, it's a niche product yeah. for radio drama, for producing you know, you know, a story, a story, Creating you know, a story with sound effects tonight, and all those things run like that. tonight on the air. So. <clears throat> right. And yeah. it, it, it's just formatted a little bit differently and it was interesting. So I yeah. can't wait to do a full review of that and check it out and put it on my, another new po- uh, website I have podcastkits.com. So you check heard it here, folks. Yes. First. Folks. All, all righty. Okay. Well, we've got uh, lots of stuff coming up. If, again, if you got a tech question for us, a home voiceover studio tech question, Throw it in the chat room, and we'll get to it in our next segment. And we're going to talk about mic techniques, so don't go away. We'll be right back. And now we return to those thrilling days of yesteryear, and we find our heroes, Sheriff Dan and Marshal George, on a dusty stakeout at VoiceOver Gulch. Let's see what drama is about to take place. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on... The voiceover body shop. You know, there's two types of people in the world. Those just getting started in voiceover and those who are established but want more work, don't we all? VO2GoGo has got you covered. If just getting started in voiceover, VO2GoGo's getting started in voiceover class is a deep dive into exactly how to do it right. With video lessons taught by... David H. Lawrence the 17th. Downloads, homework, quizzes, and actual on-mic work. And the price is right. It's absolutely free. Just go to vo2gogo.com forward slash start and you'll get instant access to the class. That's vo2gogo.com forward slash start. Now, 
If you're already a working voiceover talent and you want more work, then VO2GoGo's Pro Program is for you. This is the most comprehensive, complete voiceover support system in the world with classes, workouts, private coaching, demo production, and more, teaching you the art, the commerce, and the science of voiceover. If that sounds like it was built for you, guess what? It was. And you can get instant membership at vo2gogo.com forward slash pro. That's vo2gogo.com forward slash pro. Getting started or going pro, go to vo2gogo.com now. It's everything you need to be a successful voiceover talent. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. And we're back here on VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver. We think of it as it's our own little world, but there's, there's more out there. It's got fingers in the different industries for yes, sure this is true now if you're getting started in voiceover or you've been doing it for a while and you're mystified by these guys you know the microphone and, and all the things that we have here that we do voiceover with you got two guys that actually know how to do it right there are a lot of engineers out there tons there are there are recording engineers they work in studios they are fabulous they're mostly musicians There's as a well. show called Mike Pensado or Pensado's Place. If that's what you're into, go there and geek your brains out. Right. But we are focused on one thing. A home voiceover studio, which is a unique environment. They, we, they didn't exist 15 years ago. Maybe, you know, some niche guy had a big Atari reel-to-reel. Bo Weaver house. and there was uh, Dan, Don LaFontaine. Right. Bo was faxing... Not faxing, I mean FedExing reel to reels around yeah, in, taking in the eighties. Putting them in an envelope and sending them out. Now Not it's many like MP3. It. Right. That's right. It's a lot easier, but you, the basics of recording are still the same. Mm -hmm. uh, and we teach that. We help you get started and we can fix stuff when it breaks. Troubleshoot things, create processing, design a studio from the ground up, set up acoustic designs, all kinds of stuff. Right. And the longer we've been doing it, the better we've gotten at it. So that's the best part about I this hope whole thing. So. Yeah, wait, we've been doing it for 15 years. It's <laughs> you figure you're going to learn something sooner or later. Yeah. If they wanted to, if they wanted to help themselves, it's hard to do because you can crowdsource your stuff, and that's a bad idea. You can. It's very time consuming yes. to do it that way. Yeah. So the best thing to do is either go to Mr. Whittem here at right over at georgethetech.com is where you can find me and my world of voiceover technology and if you're a podcaster i can help you set up a killer sounding podcast chain and also teach you production technique to speed things along so anything acoustics all that stuff i can create your presets at georgethetech.com dan also does a lot of that same stuff over at home studio home voiceover studio dot com. Dot com that's right yeah i and, and of course i'm getting into the podcasting thing and uh, i can do all that stuff for you as well and uh, we have seven years of actual real world podcasting podcast experience. experience having done yeah. this show that might be helpful to you yeah so if you're listening to this as a podcast you know we know how to do it because you're listening to it as you're driving <laughs> down some highway somewhere <laughs> anyway um so we'd like to help you out and uh there's so many things we can do for you. So uh, find us at our websites and let us know that you need some help. Cool. A couple Any, of questions have popped into this. Yes. Should we talk mic technique first? Or nah, we we'll go. We'll answer the questions first, cool. but then we'll get into mic technique. Right. Uh, Devox, he says, 
Huge podcasting market. So does that mean that maybe there will be more competition in the medium low end for equipment? Yeah, I would say definitely. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. I was talking to the guy from Focusrite, one of the developers there. I, this was a great conference. Oh, man. And he came up to me, and he's like, this is an amazing market. Is there something that, you know, that we're not doing at Focusrite that could help these people more? And I said, well, you could have something like, you know, Yamaha's got with the AG03 or AG06 yeah. with a loop back and maybe, you know, come up with, and the guy was like, yeah, that's what you want to see in a developer. <laughs> yeah. That's cool that you were seeing some of the guys that are involved in the nuts and bolts of these products and the development of these products. You yeah, know? exactly. Because, yeah, if they came out with a Scarlet that was centered more towards what VO and podcasters do. Right. Could be pretty killer. Yeah. So I, I see, yeah, Devox, I think there's some major league stuff coming that way. Yeah. I or mean, or maybe some AAA stuff. Yeah, right? I've seen some stuff come out from Yamaha, like we said. Um, the You know, there's some gear out there that tries to sent, to target that podcast, webcast market. Um, but there's a lot more to come, I'm sure, as this market grows and they start to pay attention. So stay tuned. All right. Well, yeah, there's a question here. It's not really tech related. This is okay. a new viewer from Australia. Somebody having lunch. All right, enjoying they us watch over your lunch. Yes, nice. uh, he's an American though. All right, mm -hmm. not an Aussie. Uh, can you list some sites to find work? I've been doing work for the last few years. Two, is it appropriate to make contact with the client if I was contacted by the broadcaster, i.e., I was contracted by C contacted by CNN and the client only wanted me to do uh, ask CNN or try contact directly. Dude, great typing there. Hmm. Uh, don't want to step on toes. The job is done. I just want a client. To have, I want the client to have my info. All right. Uh, so we do the first question first. Yeah. Where do you go? You know, there's again. It's my favorite metaphor. It's like mints in the checkout line at the the uh, supermarket. Uh, or whatever they call them in Australia now. The convenience aisle, you mean? Yeah, well, no, when you're just going through the checkout the line. The impulse and, line. Right, exactly. Impulse, the impulse you know, line. All the gum, all the mints, yeah. you know, maybe an occasional kind bar, uh, you know, if you want to be healthy. And then, um, but you've got the pay-to-plays, you know. Uh, we won't mention any specific names because uh, there's a lot more of them now than there were a few years ago uh, where you pay to be on a roster and... You get to audition for stuff, and uh, and that's okay. The people who are really successful in this business, T Man, are the people who do their own self marketing. They who do. Are they send out the postcards? They're making phone calls. They're sending emails. They are networking. Walking into local businesses, okay. literally. Hey, do you happen to need a voiceover? Why? What's that? You'd be surprised, yeah. but it can happen. So that's our advice to you. On that sort of if thing. If you're watching a commercial, you know, a local commercial for some product or listening to a local commercial, and it's, you listen to it going, oh, this is terrible. The voiceover is terrible. That could be a prime business to contact. Right. You know, and market directly to them. Yeah. Do you see the the email today about the plosive in a commercial? It was no. sent out to our group, and it was, yeah. it was a national commercial, and there was a plosive, but it was talking about peas. And, oh. and Jordan Reynolds was like, I'm embarrassed by this. It wasn't him, but it's like. Well, <laughs> what do you want for 60 you mean, cent like, a pancake? Peas, like in a little pea pod, that kind of pea? No, it was a plosive pea. He was oh. talking about, you have to see the commercial. Maybe, <laughs> maybe we'll post it and you guys can see it all for yourself. So the other part was, is it appropriate to make contact with a client if I was contacted by the broadcaster? Um, I'm a little unclear about the question. Yeah, that must be an Australian thing there. Because yeah. generally the, the client is, you're going to be contacted by... The client or the client's client. Or the agent. Or the agent. That, that's casting you or something right. like that. So that's that's kind of a hard one to answer. Yeah. Uh, so I don't have a good answer for that yeah, one. Yeah, try to try Probably to specify more details. a little bit more on that. Yeah. All right. A little bit on mic technique. Well, yeah. like a couple extra seconds here. Yeah, our guest is ready to go. So yeah. We'll... Mic technique is vital. I always talk about how <laughs> so vital. You know, acoustics are important. Uh, I, acoustics are prime as far as I'm concerned. Number one. Number two is mic technique, because if you if you got a really expensive mic, if you use it wrong, it's going to show how wrong you're using it. Yes. So there are standard ways to use a uh, a, a mic. Um, now I've got, I've got my four sixteen here. How convenient! It, it is convenient. 
Um, and, and a 416, which is very, very popular uh, with people these days. It's not cheap, but there's a reason it's not cheap, because it's really good. But if you use a 416, you don't, I mean, unless you're doing promo, you don't talk right into the front of it. But you have it at about a 30 degree angle to your chest and you talk underneath it. And by doing that, you don't make any plosives. You can't pop the mic if you're, you're the mic is out of the pop zone. Right. You'll notice there's never a plosive on this show. No. Because our mic is up, up here. Uh, now, you're probably wondering, why do we get away with having the mic so darn far away? How I do mean, we do that, George? How the heck do we do that? <laughs> Well, the reason we get away with it is because our acoustics are so well done and our room is big. Yeah. And when you have a large space around the mic and very good, tune, very well tuned acoustics, yes, you get to have less tight mic placement. Right. When you have the inverse of that, which most of you do, when you have a really small booth, very small with minimal acoustic treatment or, you know, one inch or two inch foam on the walls and that's about it. Guess what? your mic placement has to be really spot on. It's got, there's a very small sweet spot where the mic's going to sound good. Right. So it makes it harder on you. You know, when you get to go into a professional commercial studio with all this space, you get to have so much more room to work room the mic. to gesticulate like yeah. I did this afternoon. Oh, it's so Mattel. nice. But those home yeah. studios take really good, really tight mic placement. Right. But if you've got, you know, with a normal home studio mic, you know, with a good studio condenser mic, like the Harlan Hogan VO1A here. Yeah. A little extra plug there. Um, you should be like about this distance from it. And the t bottom of the mic, it should be upside down. And the bottom of the mic should be at about eye level because our ears and uh, can we, can we lower this? I'll drop it into frame so okay. it's a little bit more visible oh, okay. to you guys. Okay. Can we do that? No, I think you're at its, it's I maximum. We're at, I think we're like really as far out okay. as we can That's go. That's far out, man. Okay. Oh, there we go. Oh, thank you, Sue. Okay. There's the bottom there's the, of the mic there's, right there's there. There's the bottom of the mic. So, so, yeah. So the way I would normally address it is, again, eye level at the bottom, copy down underneath here, and I can go Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle peppers all day long, and it's going to sound just fine. You don't need a pop screen. Yeah. That's so Celine Dion doesn't spit on a mic too much. Yeah. I think there's a lot of tradition around that, and people think that, you know, because I see a pop screen in all the pictures. You don't really need one. But I'll tell you, I was at a studio, what was it called? Studio B in uh, the RCA studio down in Nashville. Mm -hmm. And there's pictures of artists and video and, and archival films of artists right. singing into a U8, U47 or a U, they like the U67. Right. Super sensitive, very high end mic. These guys could work that mic and never pop it. Right. No pop screens because they knew mic technique. They right. had it dialed. So learn your mic technique. All right, we're rolling on here. Well, Chris Edgerly is standing by, and we'll be talking to him in just a minute and uh, finding out some cool stuff. So stay tuned. We'll be right back here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there, in the trenches, doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios, who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success in one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the home studio master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Drop off a specimen of your dry audio for a free analysis. Hey everybody, this is a little spot we do every show for our friends over at Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect, the great software that allows you to connect your studio to pro studios all around the world. Studios that want your talent and they want to have it now. They don't want to wait for you to send in files. They don't want to wait for you to record. They want to direct you and they want to get your audio on their computer 
now. That's what you can do with Source Connect because it's recording your voice via the internet in extremely high quality. It's indiscernible from being right there in the same studio. And it's proven technology. It's been around now for over 10 years. If you want to give it a try, go over to source-elements.com and you can get a 15-day free trial of Source Connect Standard. You don't have to have one of those little USB iLock dongly things anymore to use Source Connect Standard. You can use it right away. Give it a shot. Tell them that we sent you. And we really appreciate their support over at Source Elements. We'll be right back with Dan and our guest, Chris, right after this. You're watching VOBS.TV. I don't know why. It's crazy what they do here. I think I'm going to go somewhere else and have a cheese sandwich. All right, it's time to introduce our guest who is waiting patiently after getting his kids all clean. Uh, perhaps most recognized for voicing various animated characters on The Sim Simpsons, Chris Edgerly has a sweeping vocal portfolio that spans animated television and multiple hit video games. He's even made a few television appearances, including Hot in Cleveland, The King of Queens, Sequest 2032, and Keenan and Kel. Oh, great show. While Chris enjoys his time on screen, he's at his best when lending his vocal talents to animated television, movie, and video game roles. He's also been doing stand-up comedy or at least did for about 10 years, which is going to be fun to talk about. And uh, he also has a web show uh, that he does with his brother. We're going to talk about all those things. Please welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop, Chris Edgerly. Hey, Hello. there he is. All right. Should I do an English accent just in case people think I actually am the Chris Edgerly? Yeah, I made a slight error yesterday when I was putting the promo together, and I'm like, oh, a picture of Chris Edgerly. He says, oh, here's here's the picture. You know, there's all these pictures on the internet. This guy looks exactly like you. <laughs> Is, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm going to say he looks like me because I'm older than him. I know that. Oh, okay. But, yeah, I could have just come on and, and just tried to roll with it. <laughs> yeah, no, man. Yeah, now we got an email saying, no, that's some British guy who has some kids show in England. I'm like, and his name is Chris Edgerly. Yeah. <laughs> who knew? Well, Thanks for being good. Wherever he is, I hope he's working. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad to know you are. So tell us a little bit more about yourself. I mean, I talked a little bit about those sorts of things. How did you get into this amazingly weird business we're in? Um, you know, everybody's got a different pathway into VO, as we like to call it, but I think almost everybody at some point that does the kind of work I do, like the, the wide range of voices, I think it all starts in childhood when you discover that you can amuse and irritate those around you. Why, of course. <laughs> yeah. And I discovered that early on. I had two older brothers, and later I had a younger brother, and I would amuse my friends my family, my classmates, and then eventually around college, I decided to try stand-up. And once I did that, I integrated the voices into my stand-up act and then pretty much was on my way. I mean, it, it was a circuitous route, and <laughs> I spent more time doing professional stand-up comedy in the beginning, and that's where I was really beginning to take off. But I got tired of the road, and I used to live in Orlando, Florida. I moved from Savannah, Georgia, my hometown, to Orlando to get started in show business. And um, I booked a lot of uh, just, you know, random acting gigs, you know, that that's where the Keenan and Kel and Sequest credits come from, from my time in Orlando. And uh, then I would work as a comic. And then I gradually picked up a couple of random voiceover gigs. And then when I eventually moved to L.A., after about 10 years of being a road comic, I decided to focus mainly on just staying in Los Angeles and pursuing voiceover. I was able to land an agent. And I've always kept one foot or at least a toe in the stand-up world because the live performing is very useful. But it's really been a while for me since I've really considered myself a comic. I've, I've been a basically exclusively a voice actor for at least 15 years, yeah. I would say. Yep. But doing stand up, I mean It's a big that, help. I was gonna say, I mean, you you build your character chops and your timing and all that stuff from doing stand up, right? Absolutely. I, I was just talking to my wife today. I'd read an article about how hard it is for 
veteran comedians, established comedians to make a living in Los Angeles doing comedy because there's not very many paid sets. And I realized that there, but for the grace of God, go I. Because if I had kept at it in L.A., I might have gotten my break. I might have gotten a Netflix special or a sitcom or something else, or I might have really hit on the road, but I would have had to travel a lot. I would have had to say goodbye to having a normal family life, which I dearly want. And um, my heart goes out to my stand-up brethren because they have incredible performing chops. And it's a really valuable asset when you get into voice acting, but they can't all do voice acting. And so... I'm glad I had all that time on stage because as I was telling my wife, I was sort of recapping how I got into this business. I made a living as a road comic, but it wasn't a great one. But what it did do was it helped me set up the career I have in voiceover. I cannot underestimate or understate the value of all that live performing experience and how it's enabled me to do what I've been able to do in voiceover. So anyone who's thinking about it, Get your butt on stage and give it a try. Yeah, I've always wanted to do stand up. You know, genuinely. Give it a shot. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but usually it's just over dinner uh, yeah. and, and getting lots of eye rolls from my kids. Uh, <laughs> but um, I, my father was the same way, and it was like, you know, thanks, Dad. Uh, but Those are called dad jokes, by the way. Yes, yeah, you know, and I still remember some of them, which were really <laughs> good. I'll tell you some later. Um, so, all right, th- and there's a lot of famous other good voice actors who also came out of doing stand-up, like Tom Kenny oh, Bill Farmer. and voice Bill of- Farmer. Uh, yeah. You know, and these guys are just amazing in how they do this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Now, now you've, you're, you're now making a living here in Hollywood uh, doing the commercial work. Uh, what type of commercials have you done that we might all be recognizing? Oh, let's see. I've been doing stuff for Domino's for quite a few years, knock on wood. Mainly it's radio. I started doing TV and uh, as sometimes happened, my voice got replaced by another voice early on in that run, but I kept doing the radio stuff. And since 2009, I do, you know, a couple of radio spots for them every year that they run for a while. And I've done, oh, geez, um, I, I, I am very fortunate to say I cannot possibly recall all the commercials things I've done. It's been a couple of hundred different uh, spots over the years, but, you know, Best Buy, Miller Lite, Red Hook Beer, I, well, let's see, uh, no, I don't think I've ever done Ikea. All right, I'm going to go visit my website so I can tell you guys what I've done. <laughs> that's, that's how ridiculous uh, I am about my own career. Yeah, that's, uh, that's voiceover, I, though. Yeah. Market myself. yeah, yeah. always got to uh, check up on your profile, make sure it's up to date, no, and your IMDB, true. and... Apparently, Samsung, um, uh, Assassin's Creed commercial, Levi's, Best Buy, Pier 1 Imports, Purina Dog Chow, MetLife, Timberland, IHOP, uh, Volkswagen. Benito, oh, he's the one Walmart. that popped the pee. <laughs> it, was a, it was an IHOP commercial. Yeah. Actually, I was going to do a quick little video about that, too. You guys are, I mean, I'm, I know I can learn a lot from you guys on mic technique because you can always learn something. But I have a, a trick for how to not do uh, a pee pop, even if your mic technique is bad. If you don't have the mic in the right place, there's still a way to get around doing a pee pop, but you have to do your lips just right. So it's probably just easier if you do it your way and just put the dark <laughs> Yeah, well, we know lots of techniques. One, you know, you just to say the pee with, the, with your teeth clenched or something in front of your, you know, yeah, using the, the old, old pencil trick. Line. Yeah, I found that if you, instead of pushing the P out, you just sort of separate your lips and just sort of push it out that way yeah. or just gradually, you know, just be very soft. The ear and the mind will pick up the P where it's supposed to be and do the work for you. So you can actually just sort of gently place it where you need to go. But eh, it's just easier if you listen to Dan and George, kids. And we'll take that endorsement. Um <laughs> So anyway, so you're also doing animation, uh, yes. and that is you. You've got to be really be here in LA to be doing animation, don't you? Yeah, um, I would say that there are. I mean, there are people that like Tom Kane is an example. He's a fellow client at CESD. I think he lives in the Midwest, mm-hmm. uh, and I know he probably flies in occasionally, but 
he's a very in-demand actor and he, they probably are good at working around schedules, but he'll fly in and do some animation as far as I know. But yes, if, if you really want to have a very busy career, whether it's voiceover, promo, animation, video games, what have you, it is ideal to live in Los Angeles. You can probably get away with doing more commercial work, not living in LA. But if you're going to be doing animation, you kind of have to be here. Yeah. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't Tom Kane establish his career here, here. then relocate? Yeah. 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 I don't want to talk out of school, but yeah. I'm, I'm sure that, you know, uh, it's kind of hard to get established if you're not here. Yeah. And, um, the how, double edged sword is uh, it's a very expensive place to live. Yeah. Now, so, what, what, how did you get into animation? You just said, I want to do animation. Or did someone say, hey, you know, you'd be really good at this? Or kind of the way I did it, um, like when people ask me, how'd you get into voiceover? Uh, the real question they're asking, without knowing they're asking it, is, how'd you get an agent? Because you're not going to get that far without one if you're, if you're going to do union work. But frankly, if you want to do a lot of commercial work and a lot of animation and video games, things like that, you're going to need to be union. And um, you're going to need an agent because the agent is going to open those doors for you, get the auditions that you yourself are not going to be able to get. So the way I got an agent is another circuitous um, answer. Um, I can trace it back in a few steps all the way back to my time in Orlando because I basically cold called an on-camera agency in Orlando because you could do that in 1994 when I did it and said, I'd love to have some representation. I've been doing stand-up. And they said, well, come on in, let's meet. And they gave me uh, a monologue to prepare. I came back the next day, did it. They said, okay, we'll work with you. So I started going on on-camera auditions. Eventually, some voiceover work comes along. They send me on voiceover auditions, and I book one or two things. And then eventually, my name gets around town, because Orlando is a smaller market, as a guy who could do lots of different voices. So next thing you know, I'm working at Sound Deluxe Studios in Orlando, doing scratch tracks for all of the villains and, uh, and the heroes on the Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man theme park ride. And this is around 97. So they said, we're just getting the ride in the early stages. We want to do the soundtrack. We want to do the voices just for temp. So come up with different voices for Electro and Hydro and Dr. Octopus and all these different guys and for Peter Parker and for J. Jonah Jameson. So I put on character voices for everybody except Spider-Man. I thought, Spider-Man's close to my age. He's a lot like me. He's kind of a smart aleck. So I just did my own voice. Well, after a few months of going in and out and doing sessions for them, the director of the ride showed up and said, how would you like to actually be Spider-Man for the ride? And J. Jonah Jameson. We cast around and you're our favorite choice for those two. And I said, sure. So they flew me to LA and I recorded there with the rest of the cast that had been cast as the villains. And um, that went really well. It was a lot of fun. And it took a couple of years going in in different stages and recording and finishing up that ride. And eventually, I moved to L.A. in 97. And by 99, we finished the ride. And I ended up doing, based on that, another ride for Universal, just some random voices. So I got to know the people at Universal Studios in Los Angeles. One day around 2000, they said, um, do you have an agent? I said, no, I'd really like one. I've been touring doing stand-up and I'm trying to find a way to stay in town. They said, well, we know a really good agent named Pat Brady. And she is over at KSA, which is Kazarian Spencer and Associates. And they said, we'll get you a meeting with her. I said, sure. So I got a meeting with Pat. And I made a good impression on her. And she said, all right, I want you to go home and make a demo of as many voices as you can, like at least 20 or 25. And I went crazy and put like 50 voices on there. And I came back and she said, okay, let's whittle this down into a good demo and I'll sign you and we'll start working together. And to this day, I am still with Pat. That's 18 years later. And she moved up to CESD and took me and some others with her. And based on working with Pat, and, uh, and her being at the right place, I got all the auditions I could ever ask for. And some of those included animated features, animated uh, television programs, things like that. And you just eventually book certain things and you get into that world. Mm -hmm. So 
Um, long story longer. <laughs> It's, it's not a one-step process. No. I mean, I, and that's what I try to tell people is that it will not happen overnight. But the reason why I got to do the job on the Spider-Man ride was because I earned a reputation in Orlando. The reason why I got to do the permanent job on the ride, which is still running at Islands of Adventure in Orlando, is that they liked the work I did. And the reason why Universal stuck their neck out and recommended me to an agent is because I was doing good professional work for them. Right. So people make calls on your behalf. They open doors for you if you show that you are committed to what you're doing, that you have the chops, and that you're easy to work with. Because you can be really talented, but if you're difficult, it's going to be an obstacle. Right. Absolutely. So. Yeah. If you're just joining us here on VoiceOver Body Shop, our guest is Chris Edgerly, who is a voice actor, does a lot of character work, does a lot of cool stuff. We're going to talk about more of those things as we move along here. Now, you also do video games. And I suppose if you're in animation, video games was a natural transition to you because it's a huge business now. It is. And the bulk of my video games came earlier in my career because of the work I do on The Simpsons can be pretty exhaustive. So I try to save myself for that. So I do the occasional video game now. It's, it's rarer. Like I did work on one recently that was a lot of fun. I'm not allowed to announce anything about it because everything is an NDA these days. But yes, um, video games and animation are close cousins, especially now because video games have become incredibly realistic and they really love the, uh, the most nuanced performance possible, but it's also still a video game. So there's a lot of drama. There's a lot of tension. There's a lot of action. You're yelling your head off. That's for sure. And yes, they, uh, they do go hand in hand. A lot of the techniques. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's not easy work, you know, doing, uh, yeah. doing, doing, uh, the, the gaming work because it is screaming and all those other things. Uh, once again, if you've got a question for Chris Edgerly about all this stuff, and we're going to talk a little bit more about a couple other things, throw it in the chat room. Paul Stefano is in there jabbering away with all of you and getting those questions to us. And we'll get that to those in the next segment um now you were talking about how you're on the simpsons yeah how how do you get a gig like that uh i just wrote in you know <laughs> i just kept writing letters and they said fine you're on the show big fan big yeah, fan big fan yeah, yeah can I, fan. I can do funny voices you yeah. know yeah yeah <laughs> that's that's another one where um you know i won't go in too into the details of it but it was just an opening was available they need somebody who could do some random voices and you had to be able to show a pretty wide range and pretty specific abilities. And um, I, I got my opportunity and I, I made the most of it. And so that was back in um, 2010. That was 10 years, almost to the day after I signed with Pat Brady. Uh, and I do not lose the, uh, the, the incredible sense of, um, I don't know, fate, whatever you want to call it, that, 10 years to the day after she told me when she first signed me, you really do those animation voices well. Hold on to that because you never know where that'll lead. Mm. And 10 years later, I get the job of my career. Right. You know? And um, it's been an incredible run on that show. And hopefully we'll just, you know, keep going. Yeah. 28 years they've been on now. Something like that. We're, we're recording season 30 right now. Oh, geez. But yeah, that'll be that we. <laughs> I, uh, I joke that, um, uh, I was in college when that show started airing and my alma mater is university of Georgia and the, uh, alumni association contacted me and said, you're one of our alumni out here in SoCal. We have some interns who are getting into the media world out here and we'd love for them to meet with you and, and see a little bit of what you do. And I said, let's come to a table read of the Simpsons. And I told them. Uh, I was basically your age when this show started. And I think that kind of blew their mind. It blew my mind. Yeah. 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 And of course, now you, you get the opportunity to work with, you know, some of the great people in the business too, like Absolutely. Dan Castellaneta and, yeah. uh, you know, Hank Azaria and Harry Shearer, Harry Shearer, yeah. Julie Kavner, Yardley Smith, Julie Nancy Kavner, Neil, Pamela Hayden, Dave. Dave. Not just the best at, at that, but they're also really cool. I, you know, I, I just yeah, they're they're as nice as you can be. Yeah, they're fun. They're fun to me too. Um, uh, 
We're going to take a little break here right now. And again, if you've got a question for Chris Edgerly about all this cool stuff, throw it in the chat room right now. We'll get to that question right after these important messages. Style. Power. You're watching the home of the NFL. The all-new iPhone. Reserve your Disney World season pass now. Through all the runny noses, three in the morning coughs. An all-new American crime story, tonight on FX. This week only, it's Pasta Fest at Olive Garden. Heart rate, prime. Blood pressure, perfect. I grew up with the classics, and now with StubHub, I can get authentic tickets to the best shows. The all-new Chevy Cruze from $16,995. Be inspired, then get the beauty that's uniquely yours at Sephora. This week at Home Depot, it's our Garden Fest sale with up to 30% off all garden tools, sod, and seeds. Hi, it's J. Michael Collins, and these are just a few examples of the first-class demos my team and I are producing. If you'd like to have something similar, visit jmcvoiceover.com and click on the Demo Production tab to find out more. You know, every Monday, I have to talk to Harlan Hogan, which is a pleasure, because he's like, here's what I want you to talk tonight on your show tonight. So he, he wanted to mention, interestingly, the, the voiceover resource guide, which appears in several cities. But here in L.A., it's put out by uh, Dave Sebastian Williams and his wife, Terry. And it, mm -hmm. it's, it lists everything that you could possibly need in the voiceover world, including you and me and our show and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and uh, usually you go into a studio or one of the casting lounges and it's sitting there. That's right. And, and you should probably subscribe to it. And uh Voiceover resource guide is really cool, you know, and which is why I advertise in there. Uh, as does voiceoveressentials.com, Harlan Hogan's company, because he knows that you guys read it and he knows that you guys need the stuff that he has, like the Porta Booth. Porta Booth, we've shown it on the show many times. You know, it just packs up, you can put all your stuff into it, and, you know, your computer your microphone, your cables, and you unfold it, and suddenly you've got a, a voiceover studio wherever you are. Mm -hmm. If you're in the Antarctic, you could use that. I doubt you'd have internet, but at least you'd sound good doing it. Uh, but he's got the Pro and the Plus, and they're great for when you're on the road. And, you know, sometimes some people are real obsessive about recording on the road. If you've got to have something good there, a Porta Booth Pro or a Porta Booth Plus is probably the thing you should have. And the place you can get it is voiceoveressentials.com. And uh, it being summer and people doing lots of traveling, it's a good time to have one. And if you don't have one, go buy one now at voiceoveressentials.com. All you got to do if you want to see what one, what, which one would work best for you is go to the bottom of our homepage here where you're watching this very show. And click on the icon of Harlan Hogan, and it will take you right to voiceoveressentials.com, and you'll see the demonstration of the Porta Booth Plus and the Porta Booth Pro and why they are perfect for you. So go over there right now and buy that and everything else he has on that page. Harlan will be most appreciative. Anyway, thanks for being our sponsor for seven and a half years, Harlan. We'll be right back with Chris Edgerly, so stay tuned. Hey guys, this is Tom, also known as the voice of SpongeBob SquarePants, and you want to fill your ear holes and your eye holes with Dan and George and the Audio Body Shop. Ah, meow. Snails like it too. Speaking of Tom Kenny, anyway, uh, we're talking with Chris Edgerly, and we're talking about the wide range of voice work that you do. But, you know, when, when you do all this work, it's like, you don't want to get pigeonholed into certain things. You want to, sometimes you want to take control of your own career or you want to create content. And you've right. done this with your brother, David, who is an animator. Tell That's us a little right. bit about, about uh, this company you've started and what you're doing with it. Yeah. We're, uh, we're called edgy brothers, you know, edgerly edgy. Ha ha. Yeah. yeah, no. Wah, wah. <sighs> um, but my brother and I have always been pretty good collaborators and uh, like I like to write the stuff and he gives me good notes on it and I do the funny voices and then he's a really talented artist and he taught himself animation and he was even mentored for a bit by a, a Disney animator years ago. So he's learned some really good skills and he taught himself this computer animation program 
And so what I would do is just send him a funny voice and he'd animate to it and back and forth we went. We thought, let's just create some shorts, just some fun stuff just for us and see if anyone else likes it. And I asked him, what's the easiest thing for you to animate? And he said, something with no arms or legs. (laughs) Or a neck. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I said, all right, um, inanimate objects it is. And we just thought, you know, he he also has a a day job. He used to work in bars a lot, bartending. We thought, how about we just have bar glasses talking to each other? And he said, okay, I can do that. And he started rendering these glasses and, and I would just think, all right, I'm just going to do each glass will be a celebrity voice. So the martini glass is Peter O'Toole and the tall Collins glass is Jeff Goldblum and the short shot glass is uh, Martin Scorsese. The beer mug is, uh, or the beer pint is uh, Gary Busey and the hurricane glass is Harvey Firestein. So those are, those were my celebrity jumping off points to come up with character voices for these. So we just called it happy hour and it's all these glasses just sort of talking to each other and comparing notes on their lives and just, you know, it, whatever misadventures you can get them into in about 90 seconds or less. Right. And we had a lot of fun making it. We made about eight of them and we put those up and we have clean versions and not safe for work versions mm-hmm. and the not safe for work versions you can see on Patreon if you just sort of give us like a dollar, then uh, great. Then you get the dirty up. stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You get the you get the stuff. Ma and Pa watch when the kids done been put to bed. So as they say, <laughs> so a yeah, like for the, a <laughs> yeah, the versions I won't show my kids. Like, all right, that's what you get to see. And then um, and uh, and then now we're coming up with a new idea. Like, we'll go back and do more happy hour episodes after we come up with a new idea because the whole point is our company is really about whatever Dave and I can come up with and animate and throw out there. And when we're bored, we start something new. So we started doing Kickstarter campaigns for decks of cards and we had a lot of success doing that, but it's very tedious getting the cards made and shipping them out to all your backers. Some of them were in China and Russia and it's just, it's a, it's a headache. So we thought, let's make virtual content. Let's make digital content. That way we can just make it and put it up. And that's what this is now. So Edgy Brothers Presents, it's basically edgybrothers.com. And it's whatever animated short has seized our fancy. And um, right now, Happy Hour are the completed shorts we have. And we're working on a new idea that we're really enthusiastic about. And as soon as we get something cranking, we'll let you guys know. Great. You know, it is great having an animator in the family. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, my, my son's an animator and I get, I get to be in those and it's, it's great fun. And uh, so yeah. I, I take it, you just like, well, what can we, you, do you write it out or you're just like, well, what would this guy say in this situation and then just roll with it? Right. There's a, this is also where the stand up background comes in. A lot of it, I just sort of write on the fly, but what I'll do is I'll, I'll talk to Dave and say, Here's my idea. What if the glasses wanted to learn about soccer and they saw these British beer pints standing nearby? What would that conversation go like? And he said, all right, that's good. Try this or this. And I just step into my booth here right behind me. Yeah. And I just start kind of going with it. I just imagine how the conversation might go. And then I type out a few more ideas and I only need to make it about a minute or so, but it still needs to have a structure. It's got to have a setup and a punchline. It's got to have a premise, and then you have to fulfill that premise. And hopefully there's a little bit of a pivot or a misdirection. So as long as those beats get hit, then it doesn't have to be something that precisely follows a script. It's got to be something that I find funny, and when I send it to Dave, he's got to laugh at it. And if he thinks, you know, it doesn't kill me, what about this or this, then I do it again. And so we kind of make stuff that we find funny and we just hope that other people agree. Right. All right. And everybody should be trying to create some of their own content if they're, they're bored or Absolutely. something. If you can create that stuff and it's funny or it's good or it's, you know, that sort of thing. Don't limit yourself to just reading scripts. See, right. It helps you. It helps you create your own creative jobs, which is really important. Well, are you yeah. ready for a couple of questions from our vast audience all over the world? Including that- Australia, where it's after lunch now. Uh, Mr. Whitham, you take the control of the question, Graham, here. You got it, sir. 
Okay, the first one that I'm seeing coming in, we've got a few of them from one of our great uh, audience members who's been consistently with us for a while now, Thomas Machen. The first one that came in from Thomas is agents. Are they worth the effort or is it just more effective to just keep doing your own marketing? Well, um, the answer is yes and yes. Agents are absolutely worth the effort because they will open doors for you that you just will not be able to open on your own. I could not have gotten on the Fox lot without my agent. That's just that's just 100% true. Um, a bad agent is not worth it, but you won't know you have a bad agent until you're with them for a bit and you realize you're not getting the work you want or they're just not representing you the way you should be. And then you you amicably part ways and move on. I have been extremely lucky. I've never had a bad agent um, in LA here. I've had Pat. Pat has taken me to CESD and everybody there is awesome. So it's been great. However, the agents will also tell you we can only do so much for you. We would really appreciate it if you would also market yourself and help us help you. So a good agent will also advise you to get on social media, build a following, engage with people that might know your work and appreciate what you do, and uh, and tweet about your comings and goings. I mean, it's amazing, but when I go like to the Warner Brothers lot or to somewhere on the Fox lot or to some studio, and I tweet a picture of me outside the booth before I record, people love that. And to me, it's just in every, you know, it's just sort of something I do, but people really get into that. They want to see what it is you're doing and they want to pick up any tidbits you might have of advice. And, and that is self-marketing. My agency cannot do it all for me. So um, it is worth it to have one. And it's also worth it to bust your hump, getting your own name out there. They, they need help. They can't do it all for you. So I, it sounds like a sort of a, uh, a vague in-between answer, but both are true. Well, this, this, there's another thing that dovetails off of that. I've yeah. just been reading through the questions from also from Thomas. Obviously, the agent is worth it. So he's saying, you know, the process you went through to get an agent nearly 20 years ago, is it any different now, do you think? Are you going to go about a different way now to find an agent than you did 20 well, years ago? It's, uh, well, first of all, yeah, you're probably not going to be able to cold call an agent and get a meeting, right. you know? Um, yeah, uh, that was maybe never true in Los Angeles, and it was only occasionally true in Orlando. I have no idea what that market's even like. Um, I can speak from my own experience, but I, I can say this. Build your resume as much as you can on your own. If you're not getting access to work, then, of course, it's a double-edged sword. How do I get an agent if I don't have any work to show the agent that I'm good? That means it's all on your demo. Agents will listen to a demo, but even then, they won't use the demo as the sole reason to sign you. A demo is really going to get you a meeting with an agent because what the agency is going to do is they're going to sit you down and give you copy, and they're going to read you and direct you, and they're going to see how well you do at taking direction, how quickly you can take the copy and interpret it and give it your own voice, and how uh, sharp you are. What's your technique? You know, can you pick it up quickly? If you have those attributes, then you should be able to put together a pretty good demo. And then you should be able to get to that agency, sit in their booth and give them what they need within two or three takes. Because your demo could be amazing, but if it took you 50 takes to do it, it's not so amazing. Because on the day you're hired for a job, they don't have all day. They need you to get it and get it quickly. And so if you get a great demo together, that's step one. Then play it for anybody. I mean, I, I, I don't have much time to do this anymore, but people have sent me demos to listen to just for advice, and I'll, I'll take a minute and listen. And um, I try not to be brutal. I just tell them where they're strong and where they could work on, you know, a couple of things. But um, the people that I have walked into my agency and gotten meetings on their behalf because they already had a resume – they still had to meet with the agents. They had to sit in the booth. They had to get copy and they had to show that they knew what they were doing. And these are people with established on-camera careers. So it sounds really daunting um, and it is, but I tell everybody the same thing. There is absolutely no reason why you can't work your butt off, get an agent like I got one, 
prove yourself to them and start working as a professional. No reason that won't happen. All right. Uh, next question is from Devox, and he says, uh, what are some good ways to keep multiple voices straight, especially when they're in the same scene? And can you give us a little example of that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I assume they mean if you're doing some kind of project where you're doing two or three voices and they're all in the same scene with each other, yeah. I guess. That's yeah. what he's talking about. Well, ideally, what you're going to do is you're going to do a separate take for each character. Of course. Uh, now, I've, I'm have i very, very fortunate to witness the great Dan Castellaneta go from Homer Simpson to Grandpa Simpson to Krusty the Clown all within about five seconds. Wow. <laughs> Whoa. He's a career bird. He can do it. Uh, Billy West, I've heard, is I, I've seen him do it too. He can. Some people can just go down the page and pivot, pivot, pivot. You know, and I have, you know, I can kind of do something like that as well. But you know, when they give you a chance to do one character per take, and a lot of times in that situation, you'll get to do that. Then um, really, it's just practice. And if the characters are distinct enough, then there should be technical things you're doing with your voice to be able to differentiate them. So if I was doing a guy that was from sort of backwoods Appalachia and he's, you know, chewed tobacco his whole life, well, as soon as I sort of had him speaking to a received pronunciation Brit, there are a couple of technical things I do with my voice. And Well, of course, if I was going to be someone who was a bit more like the Queen Mother, well, then I'd go to the different part of my brain that accesses it. You see what I mean? <laughs> so... <laughs> Some You're a champ, dude. Yeah, you are a trooper for pulling out that that on the spot. <laughs> well, look, some of it's technique, but some of it is if you're just creating your own content, just cut and then yeah, all one, you know, one character, and then play them back, get them in your head, and say, all right, I'm going to play off this person now, and then boom, put your mind where it needs to be to do the second character. If you're practiced enough. Yeah, you can do them all in, in one. I mean, that's look, some of that stand-up training. I used to go on stage and throw out as many voices as I could do in five minutes, and it's a fun parlor trick and all that, but what it is is a technique. And technique is how you keep them all straight. Just be technically faithful to each voice, and it'll happen. Hope that um, thank you, man. That's fantastic. Uh, Richard Harris, he has a question for you. What is the right way to put together a character voice demo? Okay, um, good question. Uh, there are different uh, ideas on this. I'm sure you guys have your own thoughts on this too, but I'm of the opinion that um, you don't wanna overdo it as far as each character. If you hear a good five seconds of a character voice, then five to 10 seconds at most is really all you need to hear to know, okay, they do that voice well. If you have a minute, you should be able to pull out a good 10, 12 voices um, convincingly in that character demo. Because a character demo has got to be a large, it's got to be a good range. Or if you don't have a big range, but you do three or four characters really well, make it 30 seconds. Don't waste anybody's time. You can get your point across with a good voice in five to 10 seconds. And 10 seconds is almost a long time. If you've listened to a lot of demos all the time, you don't need to hear a voice for 10 seconds straight to know that a person does it well or not well. So brevity, and if you can, you know, they don't necessarily have to talk to each other. They don't necessarily have to be all telling the same story. Just make each one entertaining. Awesome right. advice. Uh, this one's about gear, and it's for me. All right. Because I want to know about a little bit about your gear. You don't have to geek way out on us, but give us a little rundown of your signal chain from mic to the computer and what kind of environment you record in. Sure. Mine is, it's pretty simple. I mean, you guys are like the real tech heads here, so I don't have the, I just don't have the, the, the knowledge you guys do. But I've been using a Shure KSM, I believe it's called. Yeah. Uh, geez. Great mic. 15 years. Yeah, it's a great mic. You can get it at... Guitar Center or Amazon, any really good microphone uh, dealer is going to have one. It's it's one of the most, I think, uh, widely used kinds of mics. Condenser mics are very popular, and this is a good one. I'd, it's not a top-end mic, but it's not low-end either. It's probably a five to $600 mic. 32, KSM 32? 
Does that sound right? Yeah, KSM32. That's yeah. right. Yeah. It's, yeah. Pr- it's yeah. pretty top end. I Great mean, mic. It, it is an excellent microphone. Yeah. And um, what's that going to? Oh, you guys. Uh, yeah. You guys must have a wide range there, too, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, what do you plug that right into? Now, yeah. Yeah. This is a custom made booth. Um, I think you can. It's pretty well. I mean, you're not going to be able to see in there. It's a cave. I like it nice and dark. <laughs> nice and dark because I've got it kind of soundproofed. Um, and, uh, yeah, I've got some sound foam up there and I just use my laptop. I've got a Mac and I've got a preamp. My preamp is like 15 years old. It's a mobile pre it only costs about a hundred bucks. And, uh, and then I switched it out. I got a newer version of something like that. And I couldn't tell you much about it except that it's red. <laughs> it just, I mean, <laughs> well, nice. we know what it is then. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. My, my wife is a musician and she said, get this one. This one's good. And I said, okay. And so, you know, obviously the Shure KSM, you can't just run it right into your computer. It's too powerful. So you run it through a preamp. Um, I use Audacity as my recording program. It's free. It's open source and it's really easy to use. A trained monkey could use it. And I am proof of that. And, um, <laughs> it's got nice bells and whistles if you want to do more with it. But if you're just sending in auditions, all you need is some good quality recording and the ability to edit easily and then boom, export into an MP3 and you're off. So basic standard laptop, a nice preamp, uh, a nice condenser mic and audacity and I am good to go. And uh, yes, I have, I have a nice um, booth. It, it cost a few thousand cause I had it custom made. And um, as far as uh, what, anyone could use i i have to admit you guys were talking about the uh the uh the portable studio the box yeah oh yeah yeah i used to use one of those they're extremely effective yeah and i dare say i i used to have i bought a fabric box from ikea i stuffed sound foam inside of it cut a hole in the back put my mic there put it on top of my desk when i had an apartment and i didn't have closet space to create a studio excellent acoustics yeah. so if you only have like 30 or 40 bucks go to that go to that person's website because i'm sure it's not that much more expensive than that and a little bit more but it's really yeah. good you know. it is it is i mean it's nothing matches having a booth but that portable box is amazing you can do a lot worse than that i assure you i like this guy he understands yeah. keeping it simple and not overthinking it yeah that's right which is what we need to overthink it. If you've got a walk-in closet and it's got carpet and you've got clothes hanging on either side, you're going to get amazing acoustics. Absolutely. All righty. Uh, Tom Machen has another question here. And this is, you know, for someone who's established and, and, you know, a working professional, he says, do you still get coaching or mentoring to pick up new ways of doing character voices or other things you've never thought of? Uh, That's a good question. I do not get direct coaching or mentoring but what i do is i pay attention and i am very lucky i get to work with legends in the business and i am not asleep at the wheel when i'm in the room with them i look at what they do and i'll pick up a a tip here and there just listening and sometimes i'll just chat with them about oh how'd you come up with that voice or you know how'd you do that Or, or we'll share stories about how we created something and And if you're just hanging out with creative people, especially if you're fortunate enough to be around really successful, super talented creative people, you are going to learn by osmosis, just being around them if you're paying attention. Because it is a good question. You can never stop learning. You never should stop learning. And so whether it's um, whether it's people who do seek out a coach and work with them or people who just like looking at new stuff, like I'll. I'll watch cartoons, I'll watch animated stuff that my friends are in, and I'll check out what they're doing and think, that's why they booked it over me. Okay, I got you. <laughs> they did something amazing that was not quite in my wheelhouse. Maybe I should work on that. Yeah, so, learning from your peers, obviously, yeah. super valuable, especially when your peers yeah. are of that caliber. Yeah, um, absolutely. If you're lucky enough to be in the room, you know, take mental notes. It will help. Definitely. Uh, T-Man has another one about, you obviously work from home, but... How what is a typical day if there is one? Yeah. How does it go for you typically? Um, 
I'm lucky. Uh, I don't work every day. Most voice actors I know don't work every day. Even the really busy ones get the occasional day off. And most of what I do is uh, I get my auditions in and my agency will send out all their auditions by 6.30 p.m. That's when their office closes. And I'll have the choice of either getting the auditions done that night before they're due the next day, or I can get up early, you know, and, and, um, and send them in from there. But I have two young kids. And so if my wife is not able to be there to help out with them, then I've got them to take care of and, uh, it's summer. So they're not in school. So it depends on what my schedule is like. If I don't have a booking, it's really about getting those auditions in. And if a couple of the characters are deeper voice characters, I will save them for the morning because I'm pretty froggy in the morning. <laughs> and for some reason, my voice just gets higher pitched as the day goes on. So uh, basically, I, I get to spend most of my day around the house if I want. So, you know, mainly I get my auditions out of the way and then it's just, all right, I'm going to go exercise and i um, going to go spend some time with my kids. If I've got a booking, I'll, I'll drive wherever I need to go to do it. And, uh, and that's it, you know, and then, you know, if it's a, if it's a day where it's a regular show I'm on, then the schedule's pretty solid. I know when I have to be there and I know when I'm going to leave, but it's, this is a dream job. Most of my days are fairly open. Well, Works I mean, me. it's a lot of work, <laughs> but you, you have to keep your voice yeah. healthy. And uh, Thomas Machen gets the last question and he says, when you're working const constantly in animation and games and all these other things, how do you keep your voice healthy or have you performed uh, even though your voice wasn't 100%? Did it affect, and right. did it affect your performance? Uh, yes. Uh, well, it starts with this right here. Drink a lot of this. Water, water, water. Stay hydrated. Uh, especially since I live in L.A. We live in L.A. It's a desert. So <laughs> you will get dried up. Um, Basically, hydrate. Uh, don't smoke. You know, if you do smoke, I, I hope you really enjoy it because uh, it's going to take uh, it's going to take some of your range away. Um, obviously, some people are such good character actors with such textured voices that the smoking probably helped them. But, you know, for me, that's a no, no. Um, I do not drink very much at all. I used to have like you know, one glass of uh, wine or beer a night, you know, which is not even that much. But these days it's, it's very rare. And uh, that keeps your voice pretty elastic, pretty healthy. I have friends who do vocal exercises every day, but I don't really do that. Um, just just talking and, and um, keeping myself well lubricated is seems to be enough. And uh, yes, if you're working on a video game, you learn early on how to do diaphragmatic breathing and diaphragmatic screaming so that if you're going to yell, you don't do it from your throat. You push it out from your gut so you can really scream really loud without actually being really loud. And there are ways to cheat it so that you can kind of get away with it over a four-hour session. But it's um, a casting director once told me, when you audition for the video game, you get to decide how hard you're going to work because when you do the audition, if you scream your bloody head off, that's what they're going to want from you for four hours. Right. If you find a way to <laughs> diaphragmatically do it and cheat it a little bit and make it sound as real as possible, if they like that, then when you book it, you'll be able to sustain that. So that's something that if you're not familiar with it, you might want to work with a coach on how to do that kind of diaphragmatic vocal delivery that will save your throat because I have lost my voice from doing, and it was a video game. And the next day, you're not quite the same. The funny thing is, the one time I really lost my voice from doing a game, it was doing a game called Flight Simulator, and I never yelled for the entire game. It was four hours of mid-range talking, and the next day, my mid-range was completely gone. But I had falsetto, and I had bass. But I had absolutely no mid range for 24 hours. Wow. I never knew why that happened. <laughs> Yo, that's amazing. Yes. And on that note, well, yeah. Chris, it has been a pleasure having you on. It's great meeting you. And uh, I'm sure we'll run into each other in Gelson's or Ralph's or one of those places one of these days. And right. uh, on an avocado. Yeah. Right. And if, again, if they want to find uh, your, uh, your web channel, uh, what's the web address for that? 
Uh, you can find me at chrisedgerly.com. You can go to edgybrothers.com, check out what my brother and I are working on, or you can find me on Twitter uh, at Chris Edgerly. And I also have a YouTube channel where I just, I've got a lot of my commercials and uh, animated stuff up there. And pretty soon I'm going to be creating my own little VO notes clips about just, you know, little bits of advice for the industry. Excellent. Nice. All right. Well, thanks for joining us and uh, thanks for hanging out with us tonight. Thank you. I'm going to talk with my you guys. You guys are great. All righty. All right. Have a great evening. You too. All right. Well, we'll be right back to wrap things up and we'll be right back here on voiceover bunny show. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. God, I'd love doing this show. But then yeah. again, if we've been doing it this long, if we didn't like it, it would be would have <laughs> been over years ago. Now. Yeah, yeah. Before I ever it's got good up, we get along. I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, next week on this show, and again, thanks to uh, Chris Edgerly for joining us. Next week, good friend of ours, Jamie Moffat, is going to be here. Well, not here. He's actually in Philadelphia. Hey, Philly. I didn't see him there when I was in Philadelphia, but. He has a, a great podcast called VO School Podcast. Mm. He's a voice actor, uh, an audio engineer, and, and an actor, and a director, and he has a great British accent. So he'll be with us next week. Very nice. Uh, August 13th, in studio, Bob Bergen will be here. Oh, right. Bob Bergen. That's Everybody awesome. wants to hear from Bob Bergen. Uh, August 20th, in the studio, Paul Pape, who we've had on a couple of times. Great guy. Uh, and, uh, and then on August 27th, uh, Catherine Haran from the voice caster in Burbank. will talk a little bit about voice casting. Oh, that's great. It's always huge for our audience to have casting people. Yeah. Around. So we got a great lineup coming up cool. in August. So make sure you're tuned in for that. Alrighty. Awesome. Who are our donors of the week? All right. Well, we've got some very familiar names for you folks who listen to regular listen to us regularly. Eric Aragoni, Andrew Kaufman, going down the list. Martha Khan. Hi, Martha. Uh, Shanna Pennington Baird. Antland Productions. Going on down. <coughs> da -da -da -da. <coughs> oh, oh, I think somebody's trying to get my attention in the audience tonight. My dad. <laughs> George Whittem Sr. George Whittem, George Whittem Sr., who is in the audience tonight. Say say hi, Dad. Hello, everybody. <laughs> He's one of our donors to the show. Diana Birdsaw and uh, Stephanie Sutherland. And, man, it goes on. Uh, what's this one? Tracy H. Reynolds. All right. That Thanks, loops Trace. us around to last week's donors. Already fantastic. All right. Again, remember that George and I do this stuff, and you can find us at... Well, you find me at georgethetech.com or hey. georgethetech for people that like short yeah. domains. Yeah, you geeky types. And for me, you can go to homevoiceoverstudio.com and uh, you will get the same great service. Maybe just flip a coin to who you're going to go to or work with mm -hmm. us both, which is always fun because we do talk. Anyway, uh, let's see what else is going on here. You've got your geek podcast. <laughs> and this is a podcast, the show logs. Dan Sutton's been joining in with Jack DeGolia doing the show logs. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, we really appreciate you, that. Uh, we are uh, also a podcast, and you can get us on Podbean, Stitcher, iTunes. Google Vo uh, Google Podcasts. Google say, Podcast. Yeah. Hey, Google. Google. Or, or okay, hey, Google. Hey, no, not Google. Hey, uh, uh, Siri Alexa. Does it? Alexa does it. Hey, Alexa. I, know. I want to I listen know. to Voice Over Body Shop. I know, and Google does it now where you don't you don't have, to have any software anymore. Just say, 
okay, Google, listen to voiceover body shop and you got a podcast right there. It's so. absolutely amazing. Uh, we're here every Monday night. If you're in the greater Los Angeles area, like the Whittem clan is tonight, you can actually join us here in the studio, uh, by writing to us at the guys at VOBS.TV and say audience, and <laughs> we'll give you the secret handshake. Uh, what else? Oh, it's your mom's birthday. Happy birthday to Mary Whittem for uh, happy birthday, mom. Is the audience camera working? No. Yeah. Ah. Oh, not even the upside down version? <laughs> oh, well. They're going to have to all come over here and be on camera. Yeah, then, okay. At the end of the show. All right. Well, we also need to thank our, uh, oh, oh, and tonight's booth was. Uh, Actually, it turned out in the end we yeah. went to Bo Weaver's. It was, oh, it was Bo Weaver's studio. Oh, yeah, yeah. Man, he's very proud of that. That is a beaut of a booth. Send in and your I, booth's I, I pictures. I that one. All right. All right, well, we need to thank our sponsors like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. Ah, VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. Vio2Gogo. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And J. Michael Collins Demos. All right, well, we need to thank, of course, the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the Betterment of Live Webcasting. Mm -hmm. Our producer, Catherine Curridan, uh, for finding us great guests like Chris Edgerly and all the great people we've got mm -hmm. coming up. Uh, tonight, uh... Paul Stefano was in the chat room. That's right. Did a great Pinch job with that. for Jack. Yes. And uh, also our floor director, technical director mm -hmm. in Galabout Town, who just knows all about this stuff, Sue Merlino, who did a great Yay! job tonight. It was perfect all the way through for the last three weeks. You can't beat that. How about the hit record? Okay, good. <laughs> She just remember, just remember to hit, hit record. record. Yeah, let's do this again. Okay, very good. Because it's not warm in here at all. <laughs> right. All right, and of course uh, we need to thank Lee Penny for simply being Lee Penny. Come visit us, Lee. Come on. All righty, that's going to do it for us this week. Where else are you going to get this information? Where else are you going to learn all about voiceover? It's we have written the entire Bible of how it's done. Three hundred and thirty live episodes. One episode after another, from start to finish. Not cut in half. We give you the whole thing. 330. Whole enchilada. That's right. So join us again next Monday night. Uh, I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Winner. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. And remember, if it sounds good. It is good. All right. Hey, let's get the Widom clan in here so they can everybody can see them. Okay. Well, everybody knows Ella. And there's the birthday girl. She can have a seat. And come on, mom. And and his brother Steve. Let's get your head down there. Is the camera? Remember the camera is that thing right there. It's now and then. George Sr. is coming in here wearing a really good Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> yes. So you guys be... honor me every time you're here. All right. Happy I appreciate birthday, it. Mom. Have a great week, everybody. Love, Love you. you. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs>